Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben, and I am totally not a robot sent here to kill you. Totally not a robot. But you know what are robots? Terminators. And by now, with all of the crappy movies that have brought down a once glorious franchise, there are a whole lot of Terminator models, and it gets kind of confusing. So today we are going to go through all of the models and break down each one for you to clear everything up. Now the way we're going to organize this video in terms of models, and it was hard to decide because the Terminator continuity is a cluster truck, is by classification and then by numerical order so I can show off my ability to count. We start with the class known as the non-humanoid hunter killers. Obviously not what everyone thinks of when they think of the Terminator. The usual image that pops into people's heads is Arnold's clen face and well-trend body. But there are non-humanoid Terminators as well. In the Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines alternate timeline created by the destruction of Cyberdyne, Cyber Research Systems built the T-1, a fully autonomous ground assault vehicle. The T-1 was designed to clear battlefields of enemy troops using its powerful offensive weaponry. The bot was mounted on a rotatable platform that gave its laser beam targeting system a wide field of attack. The T-1 used its auditory heat and motion sensors to identify targets and eliminate them. However, the primitive T-1 was a flawed machine. If a target simply kept silent and covered its heat signature by standing next to another hot object, the T-1 could not detect it. Next, the T-4 tank, a model in Skynet's line of HK or Hunter Killer tanks, was a somewhat humanoid, somewhat tanky tank. And we don't have a picture of it because it only appears in a Terminator novel. <sighs> Who writes books without pictures? But anyway, the T-4 stood several stories tall and featured twin-barrel directional plasma cannons for battlefield destruction. The tank wasn't really a formidable opponent on the battlefield and can be destroyed rather easily by small explosives. The T-7T Tetrapod, nicknamed Spider by the Resistance, was a hunter-killer bot used by Skynet to defend important points of interest. Its arms featured twin machine guns and four legs gave it efficient mobility. The T-7T was heavily armored, but it could be deactivated temporarily quite easily by shooting the red eye on its front. Or it could be stopped completely by shooting the battery pack on its backside. Next we have the Moto Terminator. Yes, Skynet produced automated motorcycles, programmed to hunt down humans. A truly insidious strategy, as humans have a natural instinct to trust motorcycles, even more so than dogs, and that's a scientific fact. Back to the bikes though, they could travel at super fast speeds and had optic sensors and plasma emitters on their sides. The sensors could calculate the road ahead and any obstacles or debris in it and instantly come up with the best path to take. Thus, they had far superior agility to human-controlled vehicles. Next, the T-1 Million, also known as the T-Meg, was a giant spider-leg robot that was designed to defend Skynet's central core. The bots, made of mimetic polyalloy, would metamorphosize out of a solid part of the core into its spider form, and from there could form all sorts of sharp weapons from its legs. Next, we have the Humanoid Hunter Killer class. Androids developed to be similar to the human endoskeleton, if not to completely mimic it. First, the T-70, which existed in the timeline created by the assassination of John Connor, was built by Cyberdyne Systems in order to impress investors. It's either capitalism or socialism, people. With one, you get super cool TVs and also killer robots, and with the other, no killer robots, but also no food. So, are you pro-killer robot or do you hate America? Anyway, the T-70, the first true humanoid Terminator, was built to guard Skynet facilities. They weren't, however, oft seen in combat, because by the time they were ready to be put into mass production, their technology was already outdated. That said, they were designed to be able to serve as basic foot soldiers. They were equipped with a high-velocity Gatling gun for such endeavors. However, their large size, basic CPU, and lack of skin meant that the T-70 was easy to locate and hit. Next, the T-400 was another early humanoid Terminator created by Skynet. The T-400 was invented as a result of Skynet's desire to create a robot that could mimic general human size, shape, range of motion, and mobility. At the time of its creation in 2018, the T-400 was considered a powerful robot, boasting the capability to lift 1,000 pounds. The bot also was the first hunter-killer to use true, though somewhat simple, artificial intelligence. However, relative to later models, the T-400 was quite primitive, as it was made from cheap and weak materials that could be produced rapidly. The T-400 also had a lot of its wiring exposed, a flaw which enemies oft took advantage of by aiming for those points. The T-400 also had a big red optical sensor that basically was an easy target for resistance snipers on the battlefield. 
The T500, as opposed to the T400, featured an armored battle chassis, which made it much more durable than its predecessor. It also was equipped with better weapons, which were synced to an acquisition AI system, making the T500 a capable soldier for Skynet. The T-Infinity Temporal Terminator was a robot created by Skynet to keep the timelines in balance. If a timeline got out of whack, a T-Infinity would be sent to correct it. The bot used its onboard time displacement equipment to relocate itself in time and also to translocate shots from enemy weapons fire. JFK's death explained. Finally, we get to the Infiltrator class Terminators, humanoid hunter killers built to look like humans and to hunt them down and kill them. These are the Terminators that we have come to know and love. First, the T-600 was a Terminator that Skynet started mass producing in 2016 to serve as infiltrators. These bots had basic combat endoskeletons made of titanium alloy and often covered in synthetic latex. Unfortunately, their rubber skin made them easy to discover by enemies. Nonetheless, the T-600 marked Skynet's transition to extremely human-like Terminators. In addition to looking more humanoid than the T-500, the T-600 was also a lighter weight than its predecessor and had an upgraded CPU. The robot stood 6 feet tall and weighed 800 pounds and could lift objects 5 times its weight. The T-600 could also punch through concrete and metal, and could run bipedal, of course, at speeds of up to 46 miles per hour. Oh, and if you need any of those units converted to the metric system, whether kilograms or kilometers per hour, please just click right up in the top right corner, right where you see the X in the top right corner of your browser. Just hit that X and you should get an instant automatic conversion. The T-700 is mostly known as the bridge robot between the T-600 and the T-800. The T-700 was armed with G-11 caseless round submachine guns and could continue to function even after suffering severe damage. However, the bot's targeting systems could be fairly easily disabled by shooting the back of its neck, and without such function, the T-700 would be rendered mostly ineffective. The T-800 is, of course, maybe the most famous Terminator, as Model 101 of the series is the bot that was featured in the original Terminator film. The T-800 was the first model to use living tissue for skin, and thus had a completely human appearance and was not distinguishable as a bot. Though, wearing sunglasses at night and taking the form of a giant Austrian bodybuilder is maybe not the most inconspicuous way to go, but still. The T-800 was the first Terminator to truly be a successful infiltrator unit for Skynet. The T-800 featured a neural net processor CPU, also known as a learning computer. This CPU was the most powerful that Cyberdyne had built to date and contained a huge database of files on everything from human anatomy to combat techniques to medical training. Thus, the T-800 was a super soldier with expertise in every area necessary to be an efficient killer. The bot had a triple armored hyper alloy combat chassis and could withstand most small arms fire. Additionally, the T-800's limbs were built to maneuver much faster than its predecessors and at top speed would not suffer the same wear and tear on its joint assemblies. This all said, the T-800 had its share of weaknesses. Its endoskeleton was still vulnerable to machine gun and sniper rifle rounds, plasma weaponry, explosives, and electric attacks. Of course, because it was made of solid material, its greatest enemy was the hydraulic press. Next, the T850, another 800 series Terminator, had a similar hyper alloy chassis as the T800, but was a bit stronger and faster than its predecessor. The 850's skin was also more regenerative, and its endoskeleton was more resistant to plasma weaponry. The 850 was also programmed to be knowledgeable about human psychology and behavior, and could itself lie. Perhaps the most valuable human power of all. Next, the T888, the third 800 series Terminator, was even stronger and faster than the 850. The 888 was capable of running faster than some cars. The bot also featured armor plating on its back for greater durability and blades in its thighs for, well, what else does one do with thigh blades? On to the 900 series now. The T-900 was built by Skynet as an anti-Terminator in reaction to the resistance reprogramming its other units. These bots were powered by plasma reactors and featured different plasma weapons depending on type of T-900. The T-900 was a flawed robot in that they were programmed in a way that allowed Skynet to have more secure control over them, but this also limited their ability to learn. They were thus less efficient bots than even the T-850s. Next, the T-950 was a bridge model between the 900 and TX. It was an advanced version of the 900 that featured some new weapons and could fold backward to shoot targets behind it. In the novels, there was also an I-950 Terminator model. Unlike the T-Series Terminators, eyes were bred by Skynet instead of manufactured. The idea here was that robots bred to act like humans would be able to better mimic humans than robots built in a factory. 
The models would start out as genetically engineered babies with organic makeups and neural net processors, the same Skynet connected CPU introduced with the T800 model. The babies would then grow into Terminator adults that were basically completely human in behavior. The I-950s were weak in that their organic bodies were just as vulnerable to damage as real humans. But because they did have some cybernetic components as well, even if their bodies died, they could still be restarted after the fact. Though for you wannabe Terminators out there, please don't try this at home. Next, the T-1000 is another famous Terminator, most well known for its appearance in Judgment Day. Produced by Skynet in 2029, the T-1000 was completely made up of a liquid metal known as mimetic polyalloy and could thus reform into any shape of similar size that it touched. This meant that the bot was extremely hard to track and could blend in anywhere or even after being identified once. Of course, it could also use its liquid metal composition to form its limbs into sharp weapons and regenerate damaged parts. The T-1000 also had a liquid molecular brain that endowed it with advanced reasoning capabilities, emotions, and self-awareness. The negative side of this, obviously, is that they were a threat to go rogue on Skynet or disobey orders. Thus, Skynet never mass-produced them. The T-1001 was a 1000 series Terminator introduced in the form of Catherine Weaver in the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Catherine was slightly more advanced, but similar to the T-1000, though she seemed to have more trouble mimicking human emotions. The T-1002 was a bot designed by Skynet for heavy combat. The T-1002 had greater control over its structure than the 1000 model and could form stabbing weapons all over its body. The TXA, only appearing in novels, was the final 1000 series Terminator. Another slightly more advanced version of the T-1000, the TXA could split itself into several parts in order to camouflage. In other words, it could mimic an entire group of humans rather than just one. The TXA could also implant elements of itself inside other humans and thus gain some control over that person. Next, the TX, built in an alternate timeline created by the first attempt at assassination of John Connor, was the Terminator model that succeeded the T-1000 series. The TX, like the T-1000 series models, had a liquid metal makeup, but combined this composition with an advanced endoskeleton based on the one from the T-900 series. The TX was stronger, faster, and smarter than all previous models. The bot housed various advanced weaponry, most notably a plasma cannon. The TX could also move its joints in ways that humans and its predecessor models couldn't, making it the most agile Terminator to date. The TS-300 was a stealth infiltrator designed by Mir or MIR, the Russian version of Skynet. The TS-300 was made of a ceramic endoskeleton that mimicked human weight and structure and had a complete human organ system, and human pheromones that could pass animal detection. The bots also had EM sensor masking units which allowed them to override electronic detection systems. Its best technology, though, was its stealth infiltrator personality transfer software, which could be used to map captured humans and create copies of them. The T-3000 was another advanced Terminator model built by Skynet in 2029. The T-3000s were actually former humans who were transformed into Terminators through exposure to machine phase matter, which would infect a target and then rewrite its genetic code. That said, the only model of this series to survive the infection phase was John Connor, who was infected by the machine phase matter in Terminator Genesis. Furthermore, this machine phase matter that made up the T-3000s was held together by a magnetic field that could be formed into different stabbing weapons akin to that of the liquid metal Terminators, and could be used to shapeshift and regenerate as well. However, the T-3000 could absorb damage better than a T-1000 could, and was able to dispel itself into mist momentarily, allowing it to phase during combat or even through solid objects. The 3000's greatest weakness was high-yield magnetic sources, such as MRI machines. Finally, the T-5000 was yet another Terminator model created by Skynet in 2029. The T-5000, also known in Terminator Genesis as Alex, was the physical embodiment of Skynet. Not a lot is known about the T-5000 given that we've only seen it once, but we do know that it is capable of transforming humans into T-3000 Terminators. Well, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and comment down below. Let me know if I got anything wrong or missed anything. Remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. For now, my name is American Ben. 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 I'll catch you next time. Generation Films. Peace.